Greetings and salutations. This is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Not a Linux Guru Guy. Today we're going to take a look at Solus again. So we're going to do some special stuff on it. Before I get started on the special stuff I wanted to do, which is basically to install Nemo Desktop on it and see what that looks like and what it is exactly. I'm going to, uh, two or three things that I forgot to mention when I did my original Solus install installation video and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to do all that over again, but I'm going to show you three things that I missed that missed on it. I wanted to go over those just real quick. So let's go over to now you're seeing on my framework. Let's first I'm going to show you my solace. Have it where I've got a problem with the uh, focus on the windows. I haven't found a setting yet that fixes that in Bungie. Budgie. But anyway, see if it gets fixed in Nemo Boo Boo. Before we get to that, like I said, here's my solace picture. It's actually a picture I took a while back at the Austin Botanical Gardens. So let's fire up my terminal here and we'll get started. First thing I want to go over was uh, where do you put your aliases? Because if, if you, I've got some aliases in here, but if you just uh, put in alias and top it out on standard fresh install of, uh, of Solus. You would end up with uh, aliases here. Just one or two aliases. Usually, I think it's a ls down here. I added group directories first on it because I like it that way. And color always sort of auto. If you have color auto, it pretty much does the same thing. So I always like to put always on it. Who knows? Anyway, so how do I get all these other releases in here? If you look at you know, bash rc file, you got one line here which pulls in profile. You say, okay, I need to go profile. Okay. So you go profile. And it has one line pointing you to uh, profile and user. That's where your, all your profiles are, basically. This is in user, share, default, etc. profile. So, yeah, so you go into that one. And you get to, we could go to that one, but I'm not going to show you where you can put it where it's easier, especially on immutable systems, because you need, you can edit the ETC directory in immutable system, but you can't edit the user directory unless you do some special stuff most of them but some of them you can't even do that but so etc is directly where you want to go so cd etc profile e that's where you need to go now you see i have my aliases.sh i created that file all in here with snapdsh the only file I had in here, so yeah. So anyway, so you need to just do nano or whatever vim or whatever text editor you like to use on this, and aliases. You can call it anything you want; it'll pick it up just the same. And all you have to do is make sure you have sh on the end of it. It looks only for sh files and that kind of thing. Let's pull it into the profile, the user profile directory automatically. It looks here for them. And there's my alias as I listed out. So, yeah, you got that. That's where you put your aliases now. You don't have to put the bash and all that kind of stuff. The, the heading and just begin. And you list the directory and the file name. And then at the end, you end, you end it the same way. End of. Beginning. So, yeah, you can do that, and it doesn't really, those all get ignored by the functions. You can put comments there if you want, they'll get ignored as well. So, it's just everything with alias on there. You want to add other things to it, like file? 
So you have to, you put that in here as well. I mean, you probably want to create your own separate file for it like this. Like say I wanted to add, now this automatically adds my bin file in my user directory onto path statement. However, you want to, if you add to order one like application, have application here, I wanted to add that on to there as well. Then I could add a path statement. I can go, I go like this. I go sudo nano. Yep, do sudo in here. And uh, just uh, as, just to make it, make sure it doesn't conflict any other issue. Put your password in. And you just put begin in the directory you're at etc profile d and the name of it is a path i don't let it do my as sh now just look real quick i want to make sure Echo. There's a current path. See, it's kind of been in there. It always puts that in out of the box on on the so so. Let's see if you have a bin directory in your home directory. Otherwise, but it doesn't put the application thing. So if I want an application there, I have to add that in. So, and, uh, oops, sudo, and, uh, as this H, and you just put my, no, uh, path addition. My personal path edition, then I put in my figure where I go, uh, D minus D, and then my path for application which would be home. If that is there, so it looks first checked. There is an application directory, and we'll add on to that. And we'll say if that is true, then it will go to this. Is if this is true, which is uh, path it does not equal that's what it is. That's right. So path does not equal. Uh, and then you gotta go asterisk. And then your home application. I forgot to put an asterisk over here. I forgot to put my uh, quotation, ending quotation. That looks better. Now, put that there. And then, it'll export to your path equals. Mm -hmm. F colon it'll take, it'll take the whole path statement in there then we actually add in home uh, 
application. So, or you can just add this on if you know it's going to be there, you know it's going to be there, kind of thing. But yeah, it just helps to. And you got it there. Then you export. And you end it. Oh, yeah, it's there, and then you save it. Okay. So, yeah, so you notice now that it doesn't have it in there. If we close this out, start it back up again. And then do a compile again. See, it's only in there, home and break applications. Also, if you want to change your pro prompt like I did, you see I have it where it cuts down. So no matter how long the uh, directory is you're in, you'll always have plenty of space to type all this stuff if you want to do that. And you have to go to the user, because that's where that's at. We'll, we'll go there real quick so you can see what it looks like. User share and CD default. And then CD to C, CD, profile, dot D. There we are. That took a while. So we only got 50 prompts. Here we see that one right there. We see our prompts right here. Prompts S8. That's the one you want. We'll copy that. Then we'll go over here. We'll hit sudo nano. Paste that in. And there's your your bash file. Now what you want to do is you want to look for PS one. It's right there. All you have to do is you right after the W, which is either capital W or small case W. And the way they, one thing that does is if capital W only puts C in the the last directory you're in there. So in other words, this would just say if this just say profile D up here and our in our prompt. It, if it just had a capital W, if you want to show the whole directory like I have here old directory where it's at, then you put in the big lowercase w like that. Right after that, you put in slash n, which gives it a new line. It won't show up on your prompt or anything, and just cut it out a new line there. Backslash n, it should be backslash. Make sure you put a backslash in there. Just like in the w and all these other ones. And this puts in character on there and the color. Or ends a color basically for whatever color is on there. Foreground colors over here. The foreground, background, AT, H share color. That's it. That ends a color makes it so go back to white at that point or whatever default color you have for your, for your text. So, yeah. So that'll work. That's where you do your prompt. All right. Now we wanted to go over flat packs and snaps. How do you enable those in this system? Okay. Let's go here. We go. You hit CD. It goes back to your, your home directory. Now we have in there. Enable and bin. So I'm going to do nano. Bin slash forward slash there slash able flat path. 
is what I have in, in here. Now here's this command you have to use. Either you can remember this and type it in or copy it down and type it all in yourself. Or you can, like I did, have this in a, in a bash file that'll, that'll do it for you. So all I have to do is type a label flat pack and it'll do this. But this is the command. Flat pack remote dash add. If not exist, that, that, that hasn't happened. If her flat hub doesn't exist, then it will undo it. Flat hub https colon slash slash flathub dot org slash repo slash flathub dot flat pack repo. It's a whole full screen on there. That will enable now. You have to run this before you can use flat packs and and uh and and Solus. Install flat packs for you, but it won't add, enable the flat hub repo on it. So that's how you do that. And you can also download so download this from my NL not, yeah, NLGG uh, dot rlcopple dot com website, and so you can download that file if that whole Enable flat pack from there if you want to in scripts. I'll leave a connection, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. And let's see now, snaps is a different deal because you know what you have to do is basically have to do a system control D. Now you find that out as you run snap. Snap, not snaps. Snap list. So two is installed. The snaps installed yet. Try snaps installed. Hello world. There's new one warning. See snap warnings. Okay, snap. Warnings. So yeah, so snap armor service is disabled. Snap application will not likely start. Run system control enable now snap armor to correct this. So, now yeah, you want to do this? You do. Got to tell you to run put sudo, but anyway, you have to put sudo system control. Uh, type and enable. Now, App Armor. I think it's all correct. No, enable spelled wrong. Oops. Enable. I'm just like see if I type. Okay, so we got that. Password. They create assembly. So next time you start it up, it'll create snaps for you. Now see if you run snap, install, hello world. And authenticate. Then and your snaps channel. And there you go. Set up things for it. Okay, I have a world. Hello world, it works. That's good in it. So yeah, that's how you enable snaps out of the box. Like I say, snaps is in, and uh, your flat packs are installed. If you do a witch on it, you'll find out flat pack. Of course, you know that installed snaps, but 
Do we get that? It's in the bin. Directory user bin where it should be. Flappax is also there. So if you install those on there, you'll get them. So they come installed. And you have to enable Flathub for Flatpaks to work. And to enable so you, your programs will start up. When you do it, you have to enable system control to get the uh, Snap App Armor App Armor service going. For it to be able to start any snaps, you type in like that, like I just did. So that's a little bit easier in Flatpak as far as that goes, as far as it goes in that regard. But sometimes you want to use Flatpak, sometimes it has to be on which one. If you want the latest and greatest zone, you might have to get a different one. So, yeah, that's all I want to show you on that part. I want to show you those two other things on Solus you need to take care of. And because I went up, it's kind of odd the way you have to go to ETC directory. In order to add the snaps in, but that's part of what it is. So now we're going to get over to what we're going to do, which is switching from Bungie Desktop View to Nemo Desktop. Yeah, we're going to get started on that. Now I'll put this also in the description. This link to this this here uh, post by Ebon Jagger who. I don't know what his position in Solus is, or if he has position. Anyway, if he does, he's... I don't know about it, so... I'm not familiar with all the... the, the devs and stuff over at Solus, or the main people who... include documentation, things like that. Maybe we're going to see if this works. Let's go to work on it, alrighty? So the first thing you got to do is you got to turn your icons, desktop icons off just in case. Turn back on at the end of it. So we'll go, we'll go back over to here. Right click, Bungie Desktop Settings. And I think I have, we oh yeah, Desktop. This top I can turn off. And then we'll and it's off off, but I just want to make sure. It's all off. There you go. So we've done that. We go back over here. Now you wanna or start in this, you wanna create this desktop here. Oh, no. mm, copy that. That's which one you want to go to config auto start to put it there. All right, okay, over here. Here we go here. And we will go to the auto start. The only one we have in there right now is auto start. And auto start is telegram desktop. Start and tray, I think is what it says. Dash start and tray, I think is the good in telegram desktop dash start and tray. It starts in trade out here without having to when you start up your pro anyway. We're starting this up so we're gonna do knee knee new. We're gonna paste it in. First I had a weird thing in there. Okay, so you get or not new desktops. Create that, and now we want to go over to here, to this, we'll copy all this here. Copy this, and we'll go back to here.
and paste it into there. Okay. Looks good. So you still have the budgie desktop, but it'll be a gnome, be an emo type setting. We're gonna find out what that is exactly what it looks like. Being more of a gnomish Nemo type thing. Okay. We will assume that's all correct. Save it. Now we have in here. Our org.nemo desktop dash desktop file. Just what they wanted us to do. So then we go back over here. This is run this in a terminal. Yeah, we'll just run this in a terminal. Using try and figure out the decon, which I don't know much about, so. Run that. Oops. Okay, that's done. Uninstall Bungie Desktop View. I'm assuming Bungie Desktop View is the actual name of the program I need to uninstall. Not just that happens like it does, so I'm assuming as much. Copy that. Back over here, then we need to Yo, pass pseudo. Yo, package. Remove. Then it is up here. So that should remove it. And there it goes. Remove that. We're going to go back to our thing is here. Log out, log back in, and you'll be in your bungee desktop settings. We'll see what happens when we, do, when we log out and log back in. Log out. All right, we're back, I think. <laughs> back in our Nemo desktop here. It looks pretty much similar to Bungie as far as it looks. But one of the things you can do, according to what you can do in Bungie, you can move this, uh, any icons you have over here around. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Sorting a thing you do in this. And see, when you right click, you get a new thing. You create a new folder. Create a new document, open the terminal, open the through, customize, paste. Don't get the traditional Bundy settings of desk setting, desktop, and all that kind of stuff. Let's turn on our Bundy settings back on. And then some else I did on here. I mean to tell you about was that the rolling I should have added that a minute but anyway. Our theme on so we'll turn on our desktop. Well, we had our we had our active mounts listed. Backups listed. Yeah. I think the thing you can do on this, you can sort. This. Ah, uh -huh, here you go. Here's your customize. Some you don't get in your budgie, budgie view, desktop view. So you can do vertical, you can do a name. Sort by name, you can sort by other things. 
you can on a range or you can that's why it wouldn't move for me turn on range off and then you should be able to move it wherever you want to you want it to go now let's try that real quick Yeah, even these back up, these auto table. When you move them where you want, yeah, you can clutter your bed, your color your desktop, all sorts of stuff if you wanted to. Or you can go back, go back to customize. You can click to auto range again, it'll pop back over there. Da -da. You can go vertical, you can go horizontal. Or you can sort them by different things, size, type, date, size, type, and date. Always don't change as much. Icon size, you make it bigger over here if you want to. Larger. Gong. <laughs> Probably not that large, but here you make them real smaller. Teeny tiny if you wanted to. <laughs> That's too teeny tiny for me though. Yeah, I like the normal. It's actually pretty decent. The normal, let's see what large looks like. It just makes it a little bigger. That, that's not too bad, if you, especially if you have hunt for hunt for them and stuff like that. I'll leave it at normal though for that purpose. So yeah, it's my current monitor layout. 1060 by 1050. Yeah, 1680 by 1050, excuse me. So you make it a bit longer, you can adjust the grid space all the way down, so space between the icons. The horizontal space you can just set too. So they round next to each other. That's about where it was. So you got customizing layouts, which you can do, and you can change the way you do it. How you want your icon to appear, you even make them where they are. I don't know anything else that changes on here. Nemo view. That said, I was going to show you how to do this part. I think I don't remember. I don't think I did that on the original Solus video I just did, so I'll show you that real quick. What you do is you go down here to your pane, and you go to bungee settings, desktop settings. Then you go down here to your panel, bottom panel. Yeah, more panels there if you wanted to create a dock situation, those kind of things. And you go to bungee menu, that's what we want to do. Click on that. And you get your configuration settings for it. You can label some of the menu if you wanted to. You can use default menu icons. Anyway, right here, roll over mouse. So if you point, you turn this on like I did, it'll roll over. Whenever you roll over a setting, it'll turn off. If you don't like that, you want to click on it, just leave that off. That's what the settings you can do on here. So you got all that, and that's how GNOME Desktop looks like. It looks like pretty much like Budgie, except you can move these around however you want. So if you like that and you want to be able to have more control over what your icons on your desktop look, where they appear and stuff, you have total control if you want, or you can have minimal control. Whatever your heart desires. <laughs> so that's cool. And here another desktop will start the browser going. Okay. There you go, there's the browser. Now yeah, if I go back to, back to this. See how it's now, I can, if I hit 
Control Q and try to close it out. I can't do that. Can't do anything until I hit Alt Tab is the only way I know to get this back. And same thing if I go over here and back over to to this. Can't close it until I hit Alt Tab first, then I can close it. So I have not had any other desktop do that. I don't know how to fix it. Search for settings. If you all have any have any ideas, post in the comments down there below. Otherwise I'll have to figure out what to do. Maybe a game changer for me if I don't want to use budgie desktop. Because of that, because it's kind of everybody to go to some back to some you've been on before and not be able to post anything to it, that kind of thing. You have to connect, you have to hit the, either Alt Tab or you have to mouse into it and, and click it somewhere in open spot where it's not going to do anything. I don't know other than what you wanted to so that was budgie with a nemo desktop view and uh yeah so i guess all i can say about that as well as i added on a couple of things that i forgot to add on last time for your viewing pleasure thanks for checking in with me and we'll see you next time. And remember to subscribe if you want to. And until next time, may the Blinks Force be with you. Bye.